Welcome to What to Do When, a podcast from real lawyers with real perspective, where we explore a variety of legal issues and scenarios. Each week, we focus on a new topic and discuss what to do when and if any of these legal scenarios ever happen to you or a loved one. With over 40 years of combined legal experience, our hosts offer their unique perspectives and insights on a range of real life legal situations. So Scott, what's on the docket for today? What to do when you fear abandonment. That's a loaded topic. What does abandonment mean? I mean, what does it mean? Does it scare you? It scares us. Abandonment is the concept of a fault grounds divorce where one of the parties leaves. But what's the definition? Does, does it mean they just leave? Well, if I, I mean, anytime someone leaves, isn't it desertion? Is it? I don't know. Well, the code really kind of talks about, and it's not even the code. It, it's maybe colloquial. There's probably some case law we can we can pull up, but it's really um, the question is: Is someone leaving without just cause or provocation? Very lawyerly sort of terms, but just cause. What does that mean? Can I if, can I leave if you're snoring too loudly? Is that just cause? Yeah, and really because we're a hybrid kind of state where we have a no fault and fault grounds, it really starts to get tricky on how to even answer that. But abandonment technically means that you've left the marriage with a reason, without a reason, excuse me, or without being provoked. Say you're in a marriage where there's violence or cruelty or I don't know, whatever else you can think of, and you just can't take it anymore and you leave you would have both just cause and provocation but, to leave. But that doesn't mean that if your spouse goes and talks to a lawyer that they're not going to say that, that you didn't abandon, right? They can still accuse you of abandoning. Yeah, and that's why we brought this up. It is one of the, I think, the most used scare tactic in divorce is this word. If I leave, I'll get caught with abandonment. And, you know, and even people who have a really just cause or provocation to leave are so fearful of this word. And lawyers throw it around like it has this gravitas or weight, like that word. That was a big lawyer word. Um, That it has this tremendous weight to it. And really, does it, Jackie? Well, so, so you're trying to get in the courthouse door. If you're using grounds for divorce... Not uncontested, not just we've been separated for the period of time we've been required to be separated, which is a whole nother podcast. If you're using grounds to get in the courthouse door, it's a key to get in, open the door. Then you've really got to weigh your options. Is it is is abandonment your best option? Well, what does it take to to allege abandonment? So that really, though, the code talks about um, getting a final divorce decree a year after the desertion occurred. So does that mean you have to wait a year after the desertion occurred to file for divorce? No. And the the reason you use grounds, basically, I mean, obviously there are real reasons, there's real grounds, but the reason you do it is because you get into the courthouse immediately. And why is that important? Well, you start to get the, the privilege of the divorce action, which is discovery and those kind of things. You can start filing motions and petitions and things like that. When you're separate and apart for a year and waiting for that year to run, you have no ability to do anything. You're just waiting. So a lot of attorneys and a lot of people want somehow to get this process started. And so they use abandonment or cruelty or uh, adultery to get into the courthouse and get the process started. Now, what Jackie was saying, I think it's really important to understand this. It'll never happen. But Say you filed with your client for abandonment on January 1st and some by some miracle of God, February 1st, you got the judge to rule on the abandonment. Oh, we had speedy. Yes. Yeah. And you got him to rule. You still from that ruling, you have to wait the period of time to make that divorce finalized. Now, in that period, you're kind of like in that separation. You're, you're legally separated, all those kind of things. But to have the doors finalized, you have to wait that year. And that's kind of an oddity in the law, kind of an oddity in Virginia law. And a lot of states have abandoned that because of that oddity, and they've just gone to no fault. But Well, and part of the confusion, I think, between attorneys and, and people trying to figure out what the waiting periods are to get into court is that in Virginia, the uncontested 
divorce filing, you actually have to be separate and apart for your requisite period of time. Which we'll say real quick, with children, a year. Without children, it's six months. As long as you have a separation agreement. agreement. Yeah. You can, there's, there's that little catch, and we yeah. get that question a lot too, but we'll go into that uncontested divorce and how easy it really can be in another podcast. But the requirement that the abandonment be alleged does not mean that it has to have been a year's worth of abandonment. It means you can't get a divorce until the there a year has passed from the abandonment event. Exactly. And so, for instance, you wake up one morning and your spouse has left, packed up their bags, and we have this all the time, quite frankly. One person has just checked out. And right. you have abandonment at that moment. Now, are they leaving... And see, this is where the just cause and provocation starts to get wonky. Are they leaving to start the one-year separation process? I want a divorce. I'm leaving. I'm starting the one-year separation process. And is that abandonment? And is that abandonment? Most courts, are, I find, don't take that as abandonment. Does it matter? Right? That's that's the next Right. That's exactly where you're headed. Let's just say, okay, it's time to separate. And I'm leaving or you're leaving. and, And maybe there wasn't a conversation about it beforehand and the allegation from this non-leaving spouse is that there was abandonment and let's say they can show in court well there was no reason we never have a con- have had a conversation about separating um, we were still physically intimate we were still emotionally intimate our finances were still intertwined and then you just left that monday i came home from the grocery store and all your stuff was gone Is that going to matter at the end of the day or at the end of a divorce trial? See, and that's my point. And I think I tell this to my clients all the time. I'm like, okay, say they proved that you abandoned the marriage. To what end? Because if that's the only cause and that's the only thing you've done wrong, then how does that affect what is the real issue in marriage and divorce is how you separate the things that you have, your marital property, and I just don't find that courts or judges are that willing to make a big deal about it. I still think they stay pretty much at 50-50, even if abandonment's proven. Now, on the other hand, if abandonment is the type of abandonment we're talking about, where the husband's the sole provider, the wife's the sole provider, I will take the right. wife. She's got the Capital One job. He's the stay-at-home dad. And he wakes up. The bank accounts are drained. There's no food in the refrigerator. He can't keep the lights on. That's abandonment. And the court, I think, will look at that and go, that's pretty sad to leave somebody in that kind of situation. And I think that will affect the outcome of the property split. And that's a fault where it starts to impact the very lives of the people there. But if it's just one of those things where, so to speak, it's more of an amicable separation. It's just, I'm just time for me to leave. I just don't think the courts have that much of a concern about it. I don't think... It really matters, unfortunately, and I don't know how to say that other than that, and I'm not trying to diminish it as much as I'm trying to diminish it. Well, (laughs) so we've talked about the physical act of deserting or abandoning, Uh, and there's sort of a nuance in the law. I've seen it. I've used it. I'm sure you have too, and, and perhaps one of our listeners has been accused of it or wants to accuse someone of it, and that's the constructive desertion or constructive abandonment can can you can we just start with what what does that even mean yeah constructive it sounds like you're building something you know but um constructive is actions or behaviors that create a situation where really you're left abandoned and i think one of the easy ones for me is your spouse gets addicted to heroin and is gone all the time using all the time even when they're there they're not there because they're high all the time They've constructively left that marriage. They may be in the house every day, maybe walking around physically, maybe sleeping beside you in the bed, but they're gone. And addiction really, unfortunately, is a very prominent um, reason for constructive desertion and abandonment, at least in my experience. And it's it's not necessarily heroin. It could be it could be perfectly legal things like alcohol, where the person um, is you know they've reached the point where they're hiding the drinking. Or maybe they've gone past the hiding and now they're just in the open, overly drinking. But what happens is this withdrawal of physical affection and emotional attachment. And I have been able to to allege that there's constructive desertion based on addiction because of that. It's it's not 
that they got up and left. It's not even that they didn't come home several nights. It's that they they really withdrew all love and affection, both physical and emotional, over a period of time, and and that leaves that's the. It's very difficult to survive a marriage like that, and and that would be constructive. So it's not the physical act, but it is the emotional act. Yeah. And I think, um, can you think of any other places where that constructive abandonment would play? Well, I, sometimes I've used financial. The financial abandonment where the spouse has has withdrawn all access to funds from the other spouse but they're still in the house but they're still in the house and if the if the one spouse needs to go to the grocery store or get gas in the car it's this power move to have to ask for an allowance or have to ask for some sort of money to be able to go and do these basic functions that they maybe otherwise didn't before. So in a financial abandonment also can be the reverse of that where they're just overspending, overspending. And, um, but that's, that's certainly more difficult, I think, and usually is coupled with, with other abandonment issues than, than just by itself. And I even think uh, we were just talking about this earlier off camera, but even pornography and those kind of Mm, issues when they, when the husband or the wife is spending hours and hours in a virtual world doing God knows what, but usually in the pornography sphere. And I'm really concerned that these video games and these, you know, we're wearing the visors now and we can enter these chat rooms and things like that and do all sure. kinds of things. And, um, you know, I don't think the court's caught up with that as abandonment yet. I, do, I mean, a, adultery yet, but it certainly is constructive abandonment. And I think you got to kind of plead both of those and really start to push that issue because... If your husband's sitting down every night and spending 17 hours with women through the internet, even sure. if it's just pictures, he's left you. You know, that, oh, absolutely. The, the marriage is the amount of damage that pornography does to a marriage, even when both parties are participants, is horrific. We see it every day. Uh, sure. So when it's one party, the damage is, is just astronomical. And it is and absolute grounds for divorce, I kind of like to push it towards the adultery issue because I do think it's adultery. It's having sex with another woman, whether it's virtual or, you know, whatever. But we can talk about that later. But I thought I wanted to bring that last point up because we really believe that's an issue that a lot of people face. They think they have to just live in that environment. And it's devastating. Well, and I think we're seeing it more and more and partly because, dare I say, of covid And so many people who were going to work, going to the office, not sitting at home in the privacy of their living room on their computer, but going to work and and engaging with real life people every day have been for the last two years, better part of two years, next month, next week and a half will be two years from the shutdown really. And so many companies are still having their executives and even just middle management working from home that's where we're seeing even a greater uptick. I think we've seen pornography as an issue in divorce for a long time because it generally leads to other grounds, unfortunately. But I think in the last two years, we're seeing just, just I personally, in in the cases, I'm seeing a huge uptick in the pornography being a problem and leading to the dissolution of a marriage. Well, folks, that's really all we wanted to cover. I think the greatest point about this is when the word abandonment comes up, what should they do, Jackie? Well, first you got to call a lawyer, right? <laughs> you got You need to understand what abandonment means, and um, and not be fearful, right? Not be fearful of leaving if it's time to leave, or um, you know, taking the time to sit down with someone who can explain to you if whether abandonment is the right way to go, or um, whether there really should be a, a fear of, of that, or whether you have actually been abandoned, even. You know, and that, so when you have those questions and they come and you go, oh, what, what is this? I, I want to leave. Am I going to abandon? All those things that pop up. That's what we're trying to address right now is when that word comes to you, either from the other spouse or it's in your own mind, call us. We can help you walk through that and show you what you need to do or maybe right. not need to do or how to walk through that in a way that it doesn't impact you in the end and it doesn't create a problem because quite frankly, there are so many ways to do this where it won't create a problem. I believe that it's worth talking to a lawyer, not getting yourself over a barrel, as they say, before you need to. Having a good legal foundation for any of your divorce questions is the, is the first place to go. That's almost, it's kind of funny, but it really is. That's how people, 
I just want to say this. This is how we get calls sometimes. They, it's like that. It's that of ignorant urge. They hear this word and they panic. Oh, what, what, yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Please just call us. Don't live in that panic world. Don't live in that fear. Just call us. Let us walk you through it so you can be at peace. That's why we got into this business. That's why we do what we do. We want people to have peace. We want people to live out of their fullest potential. That's why we do what we do. We can... Listen to you figure out your circumstances and give you advice for your specific needs. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us today on the topic of abandonment in divorce. And look for our other podcasts for other grounds in Virginia, like adultery. Uh, That's a hot topic. So we'll be covering that soon. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of What to Do When. For more episodes, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. And we encourage you to check our archives to listen to previous topics. Tune in next week for a new episode and some fresh perspective from Kreiser Cardani.